Hello and welcome to your Triple M Monday Morning with Master O's podcast and video. This is our first one of a Q&A. This is Q questions and answers from parents as well as older students to get to know me and get to know the school and our whole ethos and philosophy a little bit better as well as our history. Uh, and that's what this episode is going to be about. It's going to be about my history and uh, beliefs as well as what Taekwondo has taught me uh, from these batches of questions that I've uh, gotten asked. So for our first one, we got what or how did Master O get started in Taekwondo is the first question. And I was born in 1990. I grew up in the mid-90s. And of course, any kid growing up in the mid-90s, you watched Power Rangers. You watched Tommy and all those Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and all them flipping around and kicking butt and beating up those bad guys and whatnot. And those, that was like the coolest thing ever. And uh, I mean... I had an older brother, and we'd mess around a little bit, and he was nine year, eight years older than me, so it was a, a unfair advantage for him slightly. And when I got into middle school, he moved into college, or he moved out and went to college, and I didn't really have anyone in the house that, to do things with and so forth. I had three older sisters, and they were all off doing their own thing. I was kind of on my own thing. I did sports. I did fall soccer. I did ba winter basketball. I started off with spring baseball and then transitioned that into soccer because I found a more uh, enjoyable experience with soccer. I wasn't just sitting on the bench and waiting my turn to bat or sitting uh, or just staying in the field. I wanted to get mobile. I want to get moving. So I saw soccer as a better fit for me in that aspect. Um, and then I did obviously did winter swimming um, with my uh, siblings. But for me, uh, Taekwondo, I started in middle school. Um, my aunt, who was in Taekwondo uh, years ago, she got she knew of my teacher that I learned Taekwondo from and recommended him in the Matthews area. She knew he had a school there, and we went over, and I took a trial there at our at my um, uh, 343 West John Street. It was a Master, a master Singh at Sang Rock Taekwondo, and it was a great experience. I mean, it was a, as far as I know, it was the only school in the area, uh, Taekwondo-wise. So that goes into why I picked Taekwondo versus other martial arts was just the ability and knowing of what martial arts were around. Um, I didn't try any other Taekwondo schools. I didn't try any other karate schools or anything. I only knew of that Taekwondo school at the time. Um, and it was in 2002, I think, 2001. It's, and I, I started there. That's how I got into Taekwondo. I had some self-esteem issues, as it, as a lot of middle school kids do, a little social anxiety. So uh, my parents decided to enroll me in a Taekwondo school um, and so forth. And uh, that's just my, the way I got started into Taekwondo. Um, and again, the self-esteem issues that came into play with my first belt testing. I, I tell a story a lot to a lot of our white belts of, how when I was a white belt, I was too scared to test. I was too nervous. I didn't think I knew what I needed to know. I didn't do what I needed to do right or well enough. So I was very self-conscious about myself. And I remember my teacher and his wife came up to me and they're like, Patrick, you're testing this weekend or next weekend. I can't think of next weekend. And they looked at me and I said, okay, we have some testing then. You've been a white belt for too long. I was a white belt. I missed two or three testings. I just didn't feel like I was ready to do it. I got my stripes. I had my requirements. I was just a white belt for a really, really long time because I was too self-conscious and nervous for myself to take that next step to try to grow and learn new things. And I'm happy that someone pushed me that was not a family member to do it because if family members push you sometimes, you know, parents pushing their kids or vice versa or siblings, it can be very like, okay, it's going to be counterproductive. I'm not going to actually do what they told me to do because I'm just going to be stubborn. And I'm happy that I had that experience with my teacher to be able to do that, which was awesome to me personally. Um, but that's why and how I got into Taekwondo and why I picked that school specific was location. Um, I'm happy we did have that kind of location because as I got older in Taekwondo, I did um, have a transportation issue and thankfully we were close enough. I We had a sidewalk the whole way down uh, Pineville Matthews Road, Highway 51, from where I lived in Matthews in our housing area, our neighborhood. And I rode straight up towards um, Matthews. And I was on the sidewalk the whole time. I was very grateful I had that safety there because I rode my bike there to and from Taekwondo. Um, nights, rain, snow, fortunately I did that. And some instructors got in trouble because they couldn't make it. So but then they got, um, Patrick's here. And I'm like, Sorry, I got you in trouble. 
But um, I was very grateful that we that location was very proximal to me to actually be able to ride my bike. And that taught me a great thing about perseverance and dedication and like, okay, I can do it. Oh, it's raining? I'll wear a rain jacket. It's cold. I'll wear a couple extra layers. And I'm moving to stay warm. Um, the It's dark. I'll get a flashlight for my bike and put it on the back of my bike so people can see me, um, which is it was one of the more scary parts of it when it was getting darker earlier and I couldn't get there. Uh, or I'd get there when it'd be light outside and it'd be dark. It was uh, a little, little I'm like, it was a little scary for me. I was 15 years old, 14 years old, and I'm riding a bike, and it was not the best weather conditions. It wasn't the best lighting conditions. And I'm going to head on to traffic because I'm on the sidewalk, going on a sidewalk. But it was the sidewalk, and there was the road. But um, again, I picked up my family picked that location. We stuck with that location. It was awesome. Um, I learned so many things there, and I grew so much there, and I was with that school until I opened Master House Taekwondo, which is uh, come in, in the process of opening Master House Taekwondo. I got let's go into the next question, which is why do you, or if you were not teaching Taekwondo, what would you be doing? Um, through my middle school and my high school um, years, I, of course, was a, I was a typical teenage boy playing soldier, army man, all that stuff. I was watching a TV show called Stargate SG-1. Um, it starred Richard Dean Anderson, which was also the actor who played MacGyver, the original MacGyver, and who would do all the cool things with all the minimal equipment and gear and somehow make it work. Uh, but it was a sci-fi military show where you had the Air Force going to other worlds through a scientific plot wormhole and you would travel from one planet to another planet they're fighting the aliens and helping to save the galaxy and save the earth and all that and I'm like oh, that's pretty cool that's the military I like that of course science fiction <laughs> it's not real or is it aliens exist joking um, but for if I wasn't teaching Taekwondo I probably would be in the military I took uh, JROTC for four years in high school um I would have and was planning to actually go into the military after high school and use the government incentives to go through school. Um, looking back at it now, I probably would have stayed in the military maybe a little bit longer than just four years, maybe more, and maybe gone into a leadership role there. Um, I've always found a great dealings and uh, fulfillment leadership and helping teach. So um, when I'm teaching Taekwondo, I feel like if I wasn't teaching Taekwondo, I would be teaching PE in the public education system. If I wasn't teaching Taekwondo, I would be teaching either science, or not science, sorry, social studies or math. Uh, I love history. I love teaching about history. I love learning from our history and seeing the th mistakes that we made and how we can fix it and correct it for our future, uh, which is awesome thing to see and learn from personally and also something you want to teach generations for the future. Like how do we learn from our past? How do we learn from previous situations in any kind of topic you look at our history and how things changed and growth and developed into what we came to now so if i was not teaching taekwondo i probably gone in the military um and i'm happy i did not because i had a great um a great position uh, where i was in high school i went to central piedmont community college i went through my prerequisites and some of the uh, more fine uh, classes that were business oriented and I realized that I wanted to make this into a career and this was one of the things that I really wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life. Um, but I mean it's just an amazing thing to realize in middle school and high school years like you know, especially in my high school years I listened to um, I had so many great role models and mentors around me between Boy Scouts, between my family, between my school, between Taekwondo. I had so many different groups I had my hands in and my fingers in to help mold me into who I did become. Um, and I have had a great number of those leaders uh, who I still keep in contact with, and hopefully I'll be able to have them on this uh, format. We can have a conversation with them and, and help learn some more things from them. Um, but again, back to if I was not teaching Taekwondo, I probably would have been military. I would have gone into teaching education. My sister is a teacher in second or third grade up in the D.C. area. Um, my brother was a science teacher who worked out of his uh, state university in Mississippi State and worked through there for the 
uh, science department to help with the local public schools in science. My dad was a history teacher. He was a uh, swim coach um, in Chicago. So we, um, in my family, we have a lot of teachers and teaching uh, in the aspect of what we do as O'Donnells. Um, but yeah, uh, if I wasn't doing Taekwondo, I, sure, I feel very confident that I would have some form of uh, teaching background, whether it be in some way, shape, or form, leadership or educational pur purposes. Um, but for my next one is why do we? T why do I teach Taekwondo? Um, one of the best things about Taekwondo that I've noticed through my years of teaching as well as learning, because everything, even when you're teaching, you are learning. Um, one of the most important things for me when teaching Taekwondo is um, it's a lot of fun. Like, I teach Taekwondo because for me, it's fun. It's not like I have to go to work. I got to go to work. I got to teach these kids, and I got to see them on their best days and their worst days. And when they're on their worst days, I could try to help them make it a better day. And when they do come in with that sad face, or they come in, they're all frustrated. They're like, Arr. but they come in and they're and they leave. They're happy and they're smiling and they accomplished something. They learned something. They got that energy out or something. Um, that's something that really makes me feel um, happy and proud. And it truly makes me even feel more when I see students who, uh, when they get frustrated and they, okay. Let's take a step back and let's refocus and let's 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 work on this together. And then they do that and they do awesome and they feel so proud. That sense of accomplishment. Um, again, that can be in teaching Taekwondo. That was for when I was um, when I teach at the elementary schools locally for as, as a substitute teacher or teach at a PE class or something. It's the sense of a kid is doing something really really hard. They're trying their best and they're able to accomplish it and they're doing a great job at it. And that's just awesome to see that. Um, but it's been an incredible um, experience to see what students can learn and what obstacles students may have. And that is an extremely awesome thing when it comes to um, teaching Taekwondo. Like I've taught students who I currently teach students, they, are, they have a visual impairment. I teach students that have autism. I have students that have ADHD, ADD, and I ha I've taught so many different students that have so many di and different um, I don't want to say handicaps um, different um, challenges in their life. They have things that challenge them and make things a little bit diff more difficult for them. And how hard they work to persevere through those things in the w which is one of the five tenths Taekwondo perseverance. And when they show that they have that sense of drive and perseverance, they're not going to quit and give up and they accomplish that task, it truly makes me feel accomplished as an instructor that they did it and they persevered and they accomplished a goal on their own. I did help them, but they were showing, they showed that they could do it on their own and they had that sense of accomplishment and that sense of strength of themselves that they can do that thing. And that, and that little thing grows and it grows and it grows and it grows and constantly grows and it gives them that sense of hope and a sense of fulfillment. And again, they, they, they had a challenge and they accomplished it. And when I help a student accomplish something like that, they break through that barrier or they climb over it or under it or through it or whatever it might be. But they're able to get through that barrier and they accomplish that goal. That's truly what makes the sense of fulfillment, not just as a student, but as a teacher. Like I'm seeing my students accomplish something. It makes me feel proud as an instructor that I'm doing a good job too and I'm trying and sometimes students do get frustrating, um, and that's when I have to learn and take a step back. Okay, <sighs> okay, this person's upset. Let's find out why they're upset. Let's figure out how we can help them so they can learn from this situation and they can grow. And that's why I teach Taekwondo, Taekwondo is I want students to grow. And how has Taekwondo shaped me as a person as well? Is It's just, it's, the first thing is, Taekwondo has shaped me as a person is to be more empathetic, I feel. Um, it's, again, like I said, I've taught, I'm currently teaching students that have, and have taught students that have had visual impairments, hearing impairments, um, ADD, ADHD, autism. 
so many different challenges in their life and they accomplish it and Taekwondo helped them accomplish it and also showed them that they can accomplish things uh, regardless of their um, challenges in their life. And it's been extremely rewarding to see that kind of accomplishment on their, pers- on their, 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 um, their, uh, their end. And it's been extremely helpful for the students to be, um, they, they, the students change me as well as my perspective on a lot of things. Um, and my teachers have changed me. And Taekwondo has shaped me so much between the people I've met, the places I've gone, gone um, the, the instructors I've learned from, whether it be from just a simple interaction to a one-hour seminar to I started learning from them when I was a white belt. And now I see where I am and where they are. And I'm just like, wow, you did amazing things in very difficult times. And they've shaped, helped shape me into the person I had. Um, again, uh, Taekwondo has helped shape me because of the countless different role models I've had. Um, like I said, I started Taekwondo in 2001, 2002. I was 11, so yeah, I was 2002. I was in middle school. Um, and it's just been an incredible growth experience because I've had the opportunity to learn from so many different masters. Um, in the beginning I had my own, uh, no, my own personal master, but I had my original master and then behind, after him I had countless other black belts, instructors and masters that I've learned from continuously through my growth and expansion of Taekwondo and, and seeing the depth of who I've learned from. I mean, I've learned from Olympians. I've learned from world champions. I've learned from some of the best school owners as well as some of the most accomplished people um, in Taekwondo. It's been so interesting to see these kinds of, I mean, I've seen Olympi- I mean, Again, I met Olympians. I've trained from, like, learned from Olympians, whether it be training or just watching and seeing how they handle situations. It's been an extremely eye-opening experience. To, and typically in school, you'd have one teacher for your school year, and then you'd have another teachers next year, next year, next year. And for Taekwondo, through my training experience, I've learned from so many people that I have never don't feel like I would have learned from if I was only just in Boy Scouts or just in uh, school or if I was just in fill-in-the-blank, a band, um, whatever it might be. I may only have a few leaders there. But through having my, again, my hands in so many different groups and how having those groups help mold me and learning from their experiences has helped me. And Taekwondo has been one of those biggest factors because there's been so many people that I've learned from uh, when it comes to Taekwondo. And our last question for today is, how does Taekwondo benefit children with school, home, friends, and their community. So, um, for children, for school first as well as home, um, for the first thing is discipline and respect. Those first two things. Um, seeing that it's not just your mom or dad, and, your, and sometimes mom and dads, they can be pretty strict and they can be yes sir, no sir a lot, and sometimes they start getting a little slack and the students or the students just don't, they're going through a phase or something, they don't want to say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, or they're not being respectful to their parents or their teachers. And that's one of the main reasons why people bring their student, their children to Taekwondo uh, is to work on that respect. And um, the thing is with Taekwondo, we have ways to positive reinforcement and we also can remediate uh, the students a little bit. We recognize like, hey, there's a little thing, we're going to correct this. Okay, you're goofing off in line, 10 burpees. And when the white belts see that, they realize, hey, I don't need to be goofing off. I'm gonna, I see Mastro's getting on this yellow belt or this high white belt or a green belt who's not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and he's, making, he's having them do something. I'm going to recognize that and pay attention, and I'm going to do things because I don't want that to happen to me, um, which I don't typically have white belts or so forth do any kind of burpees or some, some form of physical punishment. Um, I try to ver- uh, verbally uh, have a conversation with them as well as give them either positive or, cor- or, or corrections um, to help them stay in line uh, when it comes to discipline as well as how things are done in class. It's very important that not just um, 
they're not just okay everything's good 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 but okay i need to correct this and that um but it's not a lot of stuff um but for school and home um the, one of the biggest benefits i definitely would say is well, along with the, the discipline and respect is the energy outlet like in school substitute teaching at, at the elementary schools here i see they're just sitting their desk and they're doing their work and they're doing this they're doing that and there's not a lot of physical outlet some kids need to have physical outlets. They need to run around a little bit. They need to be exercised, and they need to be moving. They need to get the energy out so they can then sit their chair and focus. And I understand that, and I um, I was one of those students. Um, so definitely the energy outlet for our after-school program. We have the students come in. They have their snack. They do their Taekwondo class, and then after that, they go into the after-school room, and they start working their homework. And I've seen a, I see a difference between both groups. We have two different uh, – Groups that go in, so you have group one, group two. So group one comes in, they do their class, they go out, they do their homework. Whereas group two is doing their homework first, and then they'll come in and do class. Um, and there's a, there is a slight difference in that. So we try to have an t- opportunity for both groups to be able to get that energy out before they have that um, set sit down for your homework, do your schoolwork, classwork, etc. And studies um, for your friends, uh, Taekwondo. I've seen friendships become friendships at Taekwondo. Oh, you go to my school? I, I, I recognize you from my school. And then that friend, that person from your school becomes a friend. Oh, we do Taekwondo together. Oh, yeah, we do Taekwondo together. Uh, we do, we live in the same uh, neighborhood next to each other. And things just start snowballing. And a friend becomes an acquaintance, or a person becomes an acquaintance, becomes a friend, and friendships grow. And they, uh, they have that same starting point in Taekwondo. And in essence, like, hey, I'm a higher belt than you, so I can give you some pointers to that. And that, per- that friendship becomes more of a friendship because you're giving help and pointers to each other and so forth um and that's one of the, like, for our teenagers especially they come in and sometimes they're being quiet and awkward and i will be like hi hey, talk to each other socially interact don't be weird is literally what i would say and then then they start talking to them and they're telling stories about what happened to them in middle school or what happened in the school today or stories or whatever it might be or hey i'm a high school student trying to give you a, a little bit of a heads up of what to expect for uh to high for high school to a middle school student, and it's great to see those kinds of interactions. Um, for the community, a part, it's uh, again respect and courtesy, all these different things we talk about during our um, five tens taekwondo during our time in taekwondo. It's very important to understand that the you have to help. The whole purpose of taekwondo is helping each other, helping your friends, which is why we have. P- students helping each other, other students in class sometimes. I can't, I, I'm only one person. Maybe there's not another instructor. So I have another student help that said student um, or that group of students in that bell level or have a higher belt come down and help them. And that I try to emphasize that should be to everyone. If you see your neighbor is having trouble with something, offer them some help. Uh, part of our black belt class, our black belt testing procedure is you have to do 20 classes of assisting in Taekwondo as well as 10 hours of community service. And that can be for a younger kid helping your neighbor do some yard work or something who is, needs some help and doing something doing something that's not just yourself. And I try to emphasize this, especially for the older students our, in our teenagers and advanced classes, be a value added. Don't be something to just be, okay, I'm just going to, be another person here to take class. And it's, no, no, why not be a person who's going to help and help other people? Because as you, one person helps another person, and then, then that becomes two, and then that becomes four, and that becomes eight, and it keeps growing, growing, growing. And that's what we want to try to do here as a community at our Taekwondo school is we want to be helping other people, which is definitely one of the things that we, again, that, that comes through Taekwondo's teachings, that comes through scouts, that comes through a lot of different aspects of Taekwondo. And that's one of the things that I really feel like benefits the students in Taekwondo between their home, social, friends, their community, their school. Um, those are some of the things that I think about. Again, it comes with the courtesy, the respect, the discipline um, to do things and do things when you're told to do things. Because, again, in, in the Taekwondo school, if you don't do something, okay, hey, you guys line up over there and let's start kicking the target. And I, I'm helping a, a certain belt level do forms. And then I look back and I see that target group isn't then doing something. Cool. You guys weren't having discipline and no one stepped up as a leader to say, hey, let's not do this. You're doing burpees. Again, d- 
discipline. You got sometimes that has to be externally imposed on them. Sometimes it has to be um, re- remediated or has to, has to be helped a little bit and reminded. And that's one of the things that I feel like is one of the best parts of Taekwondo is the discipline. Again, it's, that's not just coming from mom and dad. It's coming from another person. And that's why, uh, that's how I feel Taekwondo can help benefit our children. Um, if I did not get to all of your questions, please make sure you stay tuned to our podcast and our subscribe to our YouTube at Mastro's Taekwondo. Hit that subscription bell. Hit the subscription. Hit that notification bell for all so that we know every Monday morning we're going to be, I'll be releasing one of these. I'm going to start this one starting off in the second week, second Monday in March. And after that, every Monday we'll have a new one. Hopefully we'll see you guys next time. And Mastro is out. <laughs>